everyone, welcome back to another Vapor Owning Technologies video. Today we've got another part out of our old Ford motor. We actually have no idea what this thing came out of. If you guys know what a V6 would have went in in the 90s, or if you recognize this part, let us know, because I'm kind of curious what it actually came off of. Um, we're going to do a few different things with this part today. First of all, we're going to hydroblast it just to show off how well that thing works. Then we're gonna run through a few different medias to show you guys kind of different examples of how those are gonna affect the part. This thing is aluminum, um, so it is a softer metal and it's gonna be better for actually showcasing those different results, but I think we're gonna be able to make this thing look quite nice. So let's get into it. So this motor actually came from the junkyard, so it's just got years of dirt from sitting there caked up on top. So before I throw it in one of our machines, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and rinse that off just to preserve the lifespan of the water just a little bit more. It's a good tip if you guys are trying to keep the uh, actual uh, maintenance down on your machines. All right, so now that we've rinsed this thing off, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in our Hydroblast Max, and we're gonna unleash 4,000 PSI of pressure on this guy. So if there is any more dirt on the surface, it will no longer be there. All right, so this thing is super clean now. Actually, the pressure from this thing, the hydroblast side is, was actually starting to take off paint. Uh, so I don't think we're gonna have any issue taking this paint off with glass bead. I know a lot of times there are parts on, specifically parts like this that have been exposed to heat where in some areas the paint wants to flake off and then in others it's very difficult to get off. So we'll see how that plays out with different medias. A hydroblast is one of the best ways to pre-clean your parts and clean your parts afterwards, again, because it's gonna be able to get all that abrasive that is left on this part off. Um, the hydroblast itself doesn't have abrasive, so you're, if you're just wanting to throw parts in, clean them up in no time, that's probably the best way to go. Uh, it also has filters that keeps your water clean. This thing is self-contained, and the filters are reusable, so you're not gonna have to spend a bunch of money constantly getting this thing uh, filters replaced. It's, it's a great way to just bring a part in, clean it up, throw it back on it if you want to, or put it in a vapor honing machine and clean it up afterwards. So it's a great tool to add to your toolbox. I think first we're going to start with actually crushed glass, which is probably the most aggressive media that we have. It's a large grit, it's very angular, so it's actually really good at removing paint, but it does leave you with a very rough surface. Not that you'd be able to tell very much with these cast parts. So. I want to start there before we get started. This is what crushed glass looks like. You guys can see just how angular this stuff is. This is what glass bead looks like. So your actual particle size is much smaller. And also if you were to look at this under a microscope, which we'll put some pictures on there, um, this is actually spherical and it's hollow. So it's not hitting the part anywhere near as hard. Whereas this stuff is solid, super angular, and it's great for removing any paint or corrosion or anodized or anything off your parts just so you guys can see a side-by-side -side comparison. So I'll go ahead and do this corner real quick. So you guys can see what we've done already in that short amount of time. It's just having no issue taking this paint off. We're already back to the bare metal. Um, I feel like, especially on this side, glass beads definitely gonna struggle to take this off, but that's also a good comparison. We'll just kind of look at how different abrasives, ha abrasives have better cutting characteristics than others. Um, if this side doesn't work, we'll flip back to another side to just show a good example on the actual part. And uh, we'll go from there. So this machine is a 800 base. Um, it's a really good kind of in-between between the Weekend Warrior and the 800FL, depending on what features you want and need. Again, all that stuff's available on the website for you guys to check out, as well as pricing. Um, but we're going to be using the mixture that's in this machine. So it's glass bead and aluminum oxide. We've got predetermined amounts of each that you need to use. Um, depending on what you're trying to do, we can, we can get you all that information as well as other mixtures that you can do. That's one cool thing about web blasting is because you're not actually pulling from a hopper, this is constantly mixing, constantly recirculating. You guys can mix media no problem. So you can actually tailor very specific results that you need on your parts for things like surface roughness and whatnot. Um, but what a lot of people use this specific mixture for is you can clean your parts very fast because it has the aluminum oxide in there, but it also leaves them with a nice shine due to the glass bead. So it's just a really good mixture for productivity. 
and we'll show you guys how that looks real quick. This mixture is having a very hard time at removing this paint. So I'm gonna flip this guy over and see if we can find a spot that it'll take off a little bit better so you guys can see the finish that you'd be looking for. Again, we don't normally recommend the, the mixture for removing paint of this caliber. Um, let's see, I might just try it like right here and then we'll kind of go back and do the comparison on the front side. This section did take a lot longer in comparison to the crushed glass, which was expected. Um, it, it definitely struggled a little bit. You had to kind of hold it in one spot, which again is not optimal for efficiency compared to the crushed glass. But real quick, you can actually see a difference in the brightness or the, or the shine of the finish. You can tell how dark this is, which typically means you've got a rougher finish in comparison to this side. This was with the glass bead aluminum oxide mixture. You can tell how much brighter that actually is. Um, I'm gonna try and do these sections with ceramic and glass. If they do not take the paint off, what I'll end up doing is putting them back in the crushed glass, running over just to strip that paint off quickly, and then we'll go back and finish it with one of those abrasives to show you guys how it would look. So we'll give that a shot. It's not taking it off. Oh no, it is, look at that. Real quick. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. This is our glass bead section right here, and it actually is taking that paint off, surprisingly. It is very slow. Um, that's one thing I wanna mention real, real quick. A lot of people think that your ability to remove paint or rust comes from your air pressure. It does not. It is more determined by the actual abrasive choice. Now, does your air pressure have an effect on how you remove that rust or paint? Absolutely but it is most definitely predominantly determined by the actual abrasive choice. And that's something that we will help you with here. If you guys have any questions, give us a call, leave it in the comments. We'll help you guys figure out what you need. So it's definitely a tight fit, but we did manage to get this thing in the 700. Uh, again, this is a 120 to 270 mix of ceramic. Uh, ceramic is very similar to glass bead, but it's actually solid. So it hits your part a little bit harder and it actually lasts like 10 times longer. Um, so we'll show you guys how this looks. It should be a little bit darker than the glass bead, but it might clean it a little bit faster. Starting from your left to right, you've got crushed glass, aluminum oxide and glass bead, ceramic bead and the glass bead. The polish definitely goes up as well as the finish. The crushed glass just gave us that super rough finish. You can definitely see the kind of shimmering in the light from where the, the, where the surface has been roughened. The mixture's not as bad, but it's definitely duller than the ceramic and the glass bead, because again, those are both just the spherical abrasive. But also from your left to your right, the time it took to get to that finish is, is very different. So like with the glass bead, it took us a while to remove that paint because the, the abrasive itself is having a much harder time removing it. So personally, if this was me and if I was working on this part, I would start with something like a crushed glass or just a pure aluminum oxide, quickly remove all that paint and then put it into a glass bead machine. And that's something that we'll show you guys in the next video. But really, I guess the point of this video is to show you the different finishes you can achieve, but also the abrasives that you should be choosing to get there. Um, because you wouldn't want to do this whole part in a glass bead. A lot of people, again, they think that your air pressure is what determines how well your machine's working at removing things, and it's not. It's actually your abrasive choice. So again, if you guys want to get good looking finishes, definitely go with something like glass bead. But if you're trying to remove paint beforehand, you want to start with a rougher abrasive. If you guys have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. We will love to answer them for you guys. If you're ready to get a machine like this in your shop and getting the results that you need today, you can call us at 828-202-5563. We'll be happy to help you out. And again, follow us on our other socials. We post videos just like this every day, and we'd love to be informative to you guys. Thank you all for watching. We hope you have a great day. Peace.